So you've been thinking about buying an ant miner, a dedicated cryptocurrency mining rig during passive income 24-7, 365. <laughs> oh, that's cool. There's a lot of options and Bitmain recently launched just a lot of new, powerful, efficient, and lucrative mining rigs. My name is Vosk. I'm a full-time cryptocurrency miner. You're on the Vosk on YouTube channel. Today, we are going to compare, contrast, and really just crunch the numbers, as well as evaluate the cryptocurrencies that these miners mine and see which one or ones make the most sense. Perhaps, quite literally. I've been able to source most of these latest gen miners, and to be honest, they are crushing it, uh, which is really cool. But there's a lot of factors here at play. So what I wanna do is run really one by one with the mining rigs, and then I'll compare all of them later on in the video. But before I do that, I want to remind you that these are industrial grade mining rigs. These are the big boys, they're powerful. They make some pretty sweet coin, but make sure you understand the basics, especially when it comes to the electricity they need. We got an electricity guide, but basically you need a higher voltage than your standard outlet in a US home. You can certainly wire this up in a US home, but just make sure that you at least have a place to plug this in if you should choose to buy one. Setting them up, very easy. Again, we have another video guide on that, but basically you're plugging in power and you're plugging in ethernet and you're logging in and punching your mining pool information in and that's it. it. It's very simple, anybody can do it. All of these miners are ASIC miners. They're application specific integrated circuit miners. They're purpose-built machines, custom computers that only mine cryptocurrency. And in particular, they only mine one cryptocurrency mining algorithm each, at least normally. And if they do mine an additional algorithm, it's always very similar. It's not like you can buy a Bitcoin miner that can also mine Dogecoin. If you see anything like that, that's a scam. No, 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 that's a scam. So, Let's start digging around. Let's look at what has been topping the charts recently. What has repeatedly been the most profitable mining rig in the world right now. That's gonna be the Bitmain Antminer K7. This is a miner that retails for about $5,000, actually a little bit less. It's not too heavy on the electricity bill. Even after you pay the electricity bill at current mining profitability, you'll be earning about $10 a day. And one last note before we dig into these minor models, I'm gonna run every calculation as if your electricity costs 12 cents per kilowatt hour. That's generally accepted as the decent average home electricity rate, at least here in the United States. If your electricity rate is different, you can just contrast it. I will also be using a rounded price, I'll be rounding up always, from Bitmain. Some resellers do sell these for more. These miners are hot, they're profitable, okay? People want them, they sell out quick. You need to make an account on Bitmain's website and sign up for notifications and follow them and us on Twitter and other social media and make sure you stay up to date on the drops. If you don't and you miss it, and don't worry, it happens to all of us, then there are a few ASIC miner resellers that can help you source these. I would specifically like to thank Crypto Miner Bros for helping us source so many of these latest gen miners quickly. They're doing an awesome job. Support the channel. Use the link below and punch in the code BossCoin to save some coin. And finally, let's start digging into it. So the Bitmain Antminer K7 has repeatedly been the most profitable mining rig in the world right now, oftentimes earning $15 per day, mining thousands of these CKB coins. It mines Nervos Network, which has the coin ticker CKB, they're actually called CK Bytes. And these have been mining thousands of these coins per day. That has been dropping though, as more and more of these miners come online and there's more people competing for the same amount of coins mined per day. Okay, so right now, 
I've been mining about 4,000 CKB coins per day with these miners. I have the 63 and a half terahash version as well as the 58 terahash a second version. You can expect to spend $5,000 or more on this mining rig. Remember that $15 a day is converting these CKB coins into US dollars and also subtracting the coins that we've paid in electricity to bring us down to that $15 a day. The K7 mines the Eagle Song mining algorithm. The only notable coin on that is Nervos Network CKB. I focused entirely on the mineable layer one, but what's cool about Nervos is they have side chains, kind of almost like layer two solutions. It's helping them strive for scalability. They've deployed an EVM, Ethereum virtual machine layer. Nervos Network is a Ethereum competitor, and uh, you know if they can gain some serious traction. That'll be very lucrative. Personally, I'm very excited for CKB. They've publicly committed to being proof of work and being just simply mineable, okay? That is really cool, where there are some coins that are in question, all right? Looking long-term, CKB is investing into their ecosystem and they will never move away, at least with their layer one blockchain from being a proof of work mineable blockchain. These are miners I'm adding to my mining farm with confidence. But as much as I love Bitcoin, altcoin mining is very lucrative if you have the right devices. So let's use that to kind of springboard us right into the next miner. And this will be jumping down in daily mining profitability, but it will be jumping up in the market cap category. That's gonna be the Bitmain Amp Miner S19 XP. This is the latest generation Bitcoin miner. It is efficient, it is powerful, and it earns more than it burns even at a residential electricity rate. But Bitcoin miners on a small scale compete with these massive million, going towards billion dollars, it feels like, mining farm deployments, right? When you go to the biggest mining farms in the world, what are they mining pretty much Bitcoin almost entirely, mainly, um, yeah, it's it's about BTC. It's what the mining farms want, it's what the investors want, it's what the people want, okay? And more competition means you'll get less coin. So the Bitmain Ant Miner S19 XP is a SHA-256 miner. It's a mining algorithm for Bitcoin and a few of its clones. And uh, that thing's pulling about three bucks a day at that 12 cent per kilowatt hour. All the while costing you, and this price has been all over the place lately, they've got promos, bulk deals, this and that, whatever. Re realistically, somewhere between $3,000 and $6,000. Let's take a ballpark here of $5,000 per mining rig. Okay, one thing's for sure, Bitcoin will be here tomorrow, Bitcoin will be here in five years, and it's going to, in my opinion, be worth much more in five years. It's a safe bet. And well, that's why the returns are less. Now let's talk about the miner that mines a cryptocurrency you've heard of and most people you know have probably also heard of. And you're like, well, you just talked about Bitcoin. Oh no, oh no, my friend. We're talking about Dogecoin. Dogecoin is mined by the Bitmain Amp Miner L7. This is the oldest miner we're gonna talk about today, but it's still the leading script Miner Script is the mining algorithm for the Antminer L7. It dual mines Litecoin LTC as well as Dogecoin Doge at the same time. This is a notorious miner. This is an expensive miner. You can expect to spend between $8,000 and $9,000 to buy this. Dogecoin mining is lucrative. After Ethereum was no longer mineable, Doge took the number two spot as being the second most profitable coin to mine right after Bitcoin. And guess what comes after? Doge. Oh, Litecoin, the other coin that this miner mines. It is the safest bet in mining right after Bitcoin mining. The L7 has a hefty price tag, but even after you float that 12 cent per kilowatt hour electricity bill, you'll still probably be pocketing around $11. And keep in mind, especially with all the miners in this video, prices are kind of suppressed. And that's one of the reasons I'm so excited and, and really just bullish on building a mining operation right now, because 
I, I truly believe that most of these cryptocurrencies I'm mining will 10x, if not more. So I'm floating as much of this electricity bill as I can out of pocket and stacking some serious coin. Maybe making 11 bucks a day isn't all that exciting to you. But if that coin 10x is and you held that, in retrospect, you were mining $110 a day. That may sound crazy, but that number does not sound crazy at all when it comes to a cryptocurrency ball market. And I'm gonna be there for that. You better be there too. And also, I better see you at the racetrack because I had a great time at the track this weekend, bringing the Bitcoin Supra to the track next weekend. It's a good time. That event's gonna be live streamed. I'll share it on social media. I'm really excited about all that. Um, and uh, last year I qualified to become a driving instructor with NASA. And this year I completed the instructor clinic with SCCA so I can instruct with them now as well. And uh, hey, if you're ever interested or up to it, you could always come to the track. I could be your instructor. We could have some fun, put down some laps. Just throwing it out there, no pressure though. It's a really fun, immersive hobby. Much like cryptocurrency, it can be quite consuming. And when you make the wrong move, it can also be kind of expensive. Seems like our type. When it comes to Dogecoin though, there is a little bit of an elephant in the room. They're floating the idea around of moving to proof of stake and Vitalik butter in my biscuits is trying to push that agenda naturally as well. Uh, so be aware, honestly, it's a little unnerving. It's a little scary. I don't think Dogecoin's gonna move to proof of stake. If they do, they're just a worse version of Shiba Inu SHIB. That token has beaten them to the punch on the proof of stake token aspect exponentially. But no one ever said, oh yeah, Dogecoin's got the strongest developer team. It's just a really fun meme coin that goes viral really every couple years, repeatedly, probably forever. And I'm biased. I have a Shiba Inu, a Doge. I absolutely love her. I had her before I got into cryptocurrency. So it's just uh, destiny, the Doge father. Next up, I wanna talk about the Bitmain Antminer D9. It mines Dash, it mines the X11 mining algorithm. Again, Dash is gonna be the notable coin on there, the prominent one. Dash is a old cryptocurrency, much like Dogecoin. Dash has been around for a while. Dash is, well, there's really not that much to say about Dash. It was interesting because it was a cryptocurrency back when cryptocurrencies really weren't all that interesting. Some people report that it's repeatedly used for payments. That's cool. Um, I've never seen it used for payments around me in America, but I don't see many other cryptocurrencies other than Bitcoin used. And even that is actually scarce, you know, for actually real world, you know, payment merchant processing, right? Uh, so this is a miner that is expensive. It is going to cost you probably about $8,500. Uh, this is one of the newer cryptocurrencies. It's, it's profitable, it's lucrative. It's, it's consistently one of the highest earning miners. It comes on the heels of the success of the Bitmania Miner D7, which kind of flew under the radar. They didn't make a ton of those. They didn't flood the network. They didn't drag down the hash rate, meaning that people that got those mined a fair amount of the Dash coin. Dash price has been relatively lackluster. Uh, the marketing, you know, I, I don't really see much about Dash. I don't hear much about Dash. Um, it's definitely one of my smaller personal bets. I do have the D9. The actual miner, this mining rig, is performing well. It's doing what it's supposed to do. That's cool. Uh, but it's, it, I don't find it inspiring. And I'm not all that bullish on the coin that it mines. And it's, it's a very high valued cryptocurrency kind of to begin. And again, with just not all that much going on. A lot of times when I look at cryptocurrencies, if they have a big potential upside, well, honestly, that's exciting. And it, it inspires me to really build out more miners to try to stack some coin and catch that upside. The D9er is, D9er, <laughs> the D9 miner is a conservative uh, bet and the price reflects that. It's also the newest miner to come out, which the price also reflects that. Enter the Bitmain Antminer KA3. It mines Cadena, KDA. 
Cadena is trying to build out smart contracts, scalability on proof of work. It's interesting, it's exciting. There are some things being built and deployed on there. Ultimately, it's an Ethereum competitor. What's really cool about Cadena is they are investing millions of dollars into their ecosystem and they are building a platform. So that investment, if it really kind of takes root, some of these seeds sprout, well, that's when this project will really gain legs. Cadena, I, I wasn't really that enthused with it for a while, but they've been doing, they've been working hard for years and they, they've been doing better year over year and they've really started to just gain some traction and, and above all price appreciation. Uh, but it still is a cryptocurrency that is so uh, low valued by market cap compared to just say like the Arbitrum airdrop or the Optimism chain. And, and again, those are tokens, they're not mineable, they're Ethereum layer two scaling solutions. But just to kind of put it into perspective, like they're trying to build similar things. They just already have a coin and you can mine it. Uh, so, you know, I'm intrigued, I'm interested. Cadena mining, because it became so lucrative at one point, is very sought after. And even though this miner only costs six to $7,000 directly from Bitmain, it is snatched up instantly and oftentimes sold for thousands of dollars over that initial retail price. And don't think that Bitmain isn't laughing all the way to the bank too. Their miners are cheap to produce, but R&D has a price and just being the only name in town, uh, really cornering the market with the most efficient miners for really all of these coins that we're talking about today, you pay a premium for it and it kind of sucks. So yeah, I'd love to have an army of KA3 miners, but they're hard to come by and they're very expensive and it gets to the point where their cost versus their returns just becomes a little bit less interesting. Also, these things are powerful and they're making a lot of them and it's adding a lot of network hash rate, which is decreasing the amount of KDA or Cadena coins you're mining per day with them, which yes, it drops your mining profitability, but me personally, right, I'm focused on stacking coins. I have also not been able to get one of these in yet. It's on the to-do list. And hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have several of them deployed in the farm. I've got like 2,000 amps at my fingertips now. I gotta, I need to deploy these things. I need to utilize that juice. Enter the Bitmain Amp Miner E9 Pro. Oh, how that miner wishes Ethereum was still around. That mining rig mainly mines Ethereum Classic, but it is possible to dual mine Zillica, the Zill token, with Ethereum Classic miners. In particular, we did this with the forest miner and it made that mining rig profitable again and it made it interesting and now well, that's why I keep that thing running. But the E9 Pro is not as good at dual mining due to their chip design. I've heard mixed results. I have not been able to get one into review yet. So if we really just look at it at face value and we look at its Ethereum classic mining profitability, this is a device that will cost you $3,500 and it'll earn about $3 a day in ETC. This is one of the less interesting miners. Uh, Ethereum classic it is technically the original Ethereum, but it doesn't have like the vast majority of the Ethereum ecosystem and users and supporters and participants, including the face of Ethereum, which would be Vitalik butter into biscuits. I don't find Ethereum Classic that interesting. I'd like to see it succeed and do well, but it really just kind of feels like a Trojan horse that's kept going by IOHK, which is helmed by Charles Hoskinson, who is the leader of Cardano, a direct competitor to Ethereum with the ADA token. And uh, if you don't know this, he's also one of the Ethereum founders, you know, like Vitalik, they got beef. So for me personally, that's something maybe I'll stick one in the farm, but uh, I mean, of course I may be wrong. I really like to build out uh, with my personal mining farm, uh, miners that mine coins that I'm interested in and think I have a big upside. Uh, if you just crunch the raw numbers, this miner has pretty decent returns comparatively. But 
the picture is a little bit bigger than that, but I'll talk more about that after I get to the next minor model, which will be the Bitmain Ant Miner HS3. That mine's Handshake HNS, which is the smallest cap coin, market cap coin, which, you know, basically the value of this cryptocurrency by so far. It would not take much to pump this thing through the roof, okay? And it makes you wonder, is Bitcoin gonna send it to the moon just to, you know, to fuel their leading miner for it? I'm not always a conspiracy theorist guy, but historically we have seen cryptocurrencies that Bitmain deploys ASIC miners for do very well long-term and have some serious short-term pumps. Again, I don't know right but that's what i'm betting on it's kind of what i've seen before but it's not financial advice all right so the hs3 is one of the cheaper miners this is a miner that costs if you can get it from bitmay two thousand five hundred dollars and it's projected to mine six and a half dollars per day i don't think most of these have hit their destinations i have not been able to get one in i've got one on order I think when these things actually hit, they're gonna make somewhere between two and $5 a day in this market. Uh, Handshake is an actual project. Um, it's, it's not a lot going on, not a lot of people involved, not a lot of money behind it. Um, it's more of a classic, slower, smaller cryptocurrency, uh, which is in a sea of cryptos like we have now is harder to kind of grab attention. Um, and, and maintain attention, uh, but it's, it's mineable. That's cool. Uh, their use case is simple and effective. I really like their link tree alternative uh, that they have. And I've been considering switching to that, but I have seen people have some problems with it. And I, I need uptime on my stuff. So that's really the gist of that one. Uh, for me, I wanna get a few of these and hedge my bets and you know plan for the upside. Comparing all of these miners, right? I mean. The, these are miners that have a, a vast difference, especially in initial price, ranging from somewhere between 2000 or so dollars up to $10,000. Uh, not a small sum by any means. I wanna remind you that the market conditions, they're suppressed, they're red, it's not that great. Look how far we are from all time highs on most cryptocurrencies, especially all these mineable ones that we're talking about. When it comes to adding miners, that excites me because I don't just think that every half decent cryptocurrency will hit their old all time high. I think we're gonna be seeing new all time highs. But as always, time will tell. I don't know the future, or act like I do, but I review the data and make the best decisions I can to hopefully do well. For me personally, the K7 is one of the most exciting miners in this bunch as far as its price versus how much it earns and the hopeful upside I see for CKB. The KA3 is another great option if you're really kind of hoping and betting on an upside. But again, Cadena Mining has become so hyped because KDA had a serious pump in the previous market. If it goes back to just its old all-time high, it will somewhere between 14 and 28X. So just think about that. If it's making 10 bucks, it's $100 a day in retrospect. Like, yes, sign me up for that. Of course, it's great to add Bitcoin miners. S19 XPs are on my agenda. I got one in uh, early to review. It's a good performer like you wouldn't expect, it's fine. It's really easy to get fixated on the current numbers. What this miner costs today, how many dollars per day it earns today, right? And I like to take a step back and look at how many coins it mines per day. And I've talked a lot about the potential upside of cryptocurrencies, but what many people seem to forget about is it's not just the cryptocurrency that has an upside. If these cryptocurrencies take off and they raise you know, heavily in price, these miners appreciate immensely. And you can simply liquidate or downsize or hedge your farm, right? A mining rig that costs a couple thousand can seriously go up to being worth tens of thousands of dollars. It's crazy. And basically, this is the time to be adding hardware as opposed to selling hardware. And 
when these miners are costing 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars a piece, maybe you take some profit in more ways than one. As always, do whatever you want to do, do what you can afford to do. Uh, above all, I would really encourage you to get involved. Mining is fun. The community is engaging and incredible. Make sure to join the Voscoin Discord server. We have the original mining Discord server and we're the best by far. And we're just a lot of fun. Everyone's really cool in there. It's supportive. They'll help you get started, right? We also have the forum, Voscoin Talk, great place to post threads. If you're considering using any sort of ASIC miner reseller, there's a lot out there and a lot of them are scams or junk. Please take the time to post a thread on Voscoin Talk, our forum. I'll, I'll check it every day. I'll look for it. I'll look for you. And I'll answer your thread. Others will chime in as well. And uh, let us know where you're looking to buy. Above all, just to make sure you don't get scammed. It, it seems like a trivial thing, but you would be astonished how many people get scammed in cryptocurrency. Also, I'm not DMing you anywhere trying to sell you mining rigs. I'm not selling any mining rigs right now. I am adding mining rigs, okay? A lot of scammers and impersonators out there. You can, of course, ask in the Discord server and other places as well. Most of these places only accept cryptocurrency. And before you send thousands of dollars in cryptocurrency, which, of course, is non-refundable, get somebody to double check. And if you don't know anyone in cryptocurrency, it's a great opportunity to make some friends online. Some of my best friends I've made simply online through cryptocurrency. I invite you to spend some time and, you know, make, uh, make friends and learn just in hobbies. So, hey, let me know if you enjoyed this video down in the comments below. Please hit the thumbs up. Uh, let me know your feedback, which miner you're going with uh, and why or none of them and why. I'm all ears and uh, love to get some discussion going on that. Thinking about this, I mean, one last thing I really want to say to close this out, and I've kind of already said it, so it's really just reiterating it. If you're on the fence, do it. Get involved. And, and if you want a pilot experiment, check out the gold shell box miners, right? I focused on the best, most profitable mining rigs, which really happen to all be from Bitmain and their Ant Miner, ASIC Miner series right now. But there's the gold shell box miners. They're small, they're affordable, they cost a couple hundred bucks. You can, you know, dip your toe into it. These things make somewhere around like a dollar a day, right? but they only cost a couple hundred, several hundred dollars, as opposed to a couple thousand or several thousands of dollars. Big difference. Also, make sure you're aware and plan for tariffs, especially if you buy direct from Bitmain. A lot of the times, resellers will take care of tariffs for you or ship from within your country, and then you don't have to pay any tariffs. If you order directly from Bitmain, uh, you'll probably be paying tariffs, which can add like a whopping 30% to your bill. So make sure you do some research on that or just kind of be prepared for it. Um, it's, it's not a good time. Taxation is theft. They print as much money as they want and then they take more from us while they inflate and degrade what we have, devalue. Ah, thanks for watching. We'll keep fighting. I'll see you on the next video. Or at least I better.